we had a test screening and we had a number of people at that test screening going, I want them to be united at the bridge. How can you even say that? You've seen somebody murdering someone. Yeah, but they were such a nice family. Perhaps they care equally or even more about wonderful family units. Maybe that somehow trumps, oh yeah, he's a murderer, but, he, but he's a great dad. I know my wife felt that. I don't know what that says about our marriage, but she wanted me to get back together with Nicole. <laughs> Hello, I'm Hugh Grant. I am Susanna Beer. I play Jonathan Fraser in The Undoing. I'm the director of The Undoing, and we will be visiting the bridge scene from The Undoing, which is the finale of the show. Oh, there it is, dead ahead. That, my friend, is the Wurtz Street Bridge. Once a thing of majestic beauty now. Not so much, huh? He thought he was going to get away. He thought he was going to be saved by his star lawyer by his loyal wife. And after Grace had undeniable proof that he actually did murder Eleanor, he knows he's, he's doomed. So he kidnaps his own son and goes on this crazy road trip with him, supposedly to eat clams. And so he's escaping the police, he's escaping everything, and this is where it comes to a conclusion. Dad, the light is red, Dad. Dad, it's a red light. Shooting in a car is always kind of weird. You have the actors sitting with walkie-talkies. It's a very intimate scene in a very intimate space, and then you kind of take one step, and you have the crew on the loader where the car is loaded onto, and then you have, like, probably eight other cars behind and in front. It's like this huge, big setup on something which is really small and intimate. I saw images of that bridge, and I just thought it was kind of beautiful and old and very, very different from Manhattan, and so... It just seemed like the right location to shoot it in. And also, you know, the logistics of we could actually close down the ropes and all those kind of things. You gotta get me out of here. Can you land this thing? Land it. Dad. 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 Well, I'd like to tell you that I was in grave mortal danger, but they'd rigged a sort of basket for me to fall into, should I have fallen over, and there were two big stuntmen waiting to catch me. So <laughs> I wasn't very brave, really. I was much more worried about the acting side of it. You've got to give it everything, but at the same time, you just think, oh, we've got to keep it real. So there's all that, and then tons of technical stuff going on at the same time. It was boiling hot. We started in January, and it was so cold that the camera literally froze and we had to go home, and ended having to hide in that car between takes because it was like 100 degrees. By the end of that scene, both uh, Nicole and Noah had lost their voices because he was screaming. No! No! Don't run from no! it! Don't run from it! And Nicole was screaming. Oh, no! Ma'am, you can't go through. No! You can't go through. No! It was very quiet after a few hours of tuning that sequence. Well, he had to do it a lot of times. It started as a great scream and ended up as... It was interesting having Noah with Nicole and Hugh, who are such amazing actors. He completely held his own. The thing you dread sometimes with child actors is a pre-rehearsal. Some coach has got to them and... Uh, you know, they've got a way of saying their lines that nothing's going to stop them doing it like that. And, he, you know, he's just like a really good adult actor. He comes in and changes things according to how everyone else is doing the scene around him and not phased by anything. He is that kid who just really understands what it means and, and, and feels it and has not just intuitive sense of, of what works, but also intellectual capacity to to articulate it and change it. And whenever Hugh would say something different, which he does frequently, there would be no problem for Noah. He would be totally in the scene and he would just play it back. I love you. Jonathan, being the sociopath he is, is until the very last moment capable of believing he's going to be saved. When Grace comes running, Jonathan very happily believes that Grace have come to her senses, is now wanting to save him. 
my hope is that the audience have a, a weak beat of, of going, no, she's not doing that. I mean, like, really hoping that she's not going back to him. And we had quite a lot of discussions about, will Grace turn back at Jonathan when he's being captured by the police? And I was like, no, she's not going to do that. <laughs> The flashbacks were not scripted at all. That was a stroke of editorial and directorial genius from Susanna. All I thought really was, here's a scene where the true Jonathan psychopath is starting to uh, break the surface of his perfect carapace. And I thought, if that comes off, great. But there's always uh, a danger that it won't. It's one of the things actors slightly dread when the scene requires them to go a bit loony. It's dodgy, it's difficult. So being me and uh, taking the negative out of everything, I just thought, well, uh, uh, this will be a disaster. Grace, come here. Come here. Give me a hug. Grace. The whole of Jonathan is based on unbelievable narcissism. His whole life, he's got away with everything because people admire him. And so the great Jonathan simply assumes that although things are very, very bad circumstantially in that moment, something will turn up. And sure enough, it does. Here comes Grace to save the day. And then when she doesn't save the day and she just takes the boy away and looks at him like he's a zoo animal, we get sp spoilt, twisted Jonathan shouting, Grace, Henry! And it's because he really can't accept failure. Grace! With this sequence, I was looking at a number of action sequences, but I was very adamant about maintaining this as a character piece. You can't take a series which essentially is about human beings and which is about how you look at someone, how you perceive someone, how what somebody's face is like. And then at the very last scene, don't have that as the heart of the scene. You tip it too much in that action direction and you kind of go, this doesn't, this, this sequence doesn't belong in this show. It belongs in a different show. So there is a definite action element, but essentially, it needed to be a cohesive piece in terms of the entire series. So, of course, we had to watch Hugh in a close-up. There were a number of variations of the ending. There were a version where the script essentially ends with with Grace having revealed her cards at the court case and, and, and Jonathan know he's doomed. But to all of us, that didn't feel like a satisfying ending. It felt like Jonathan being such a strong antagonist. We wanted him and he would have wanted to do something more. And also there was a kind of deliciousness in now knowing that he's the villain and then seeing him full force. We probably re-edited that sequence 50 times because at some point it was probably 20 minutes long. I think as a director, you always had that moment where you fall in love with the material and you don't want to cut any of it and, and it goes on forever. And then you realize, okay, I better get rid of my own obsession with every single moment. And then you actually get to a point where it sort of is a version of how you want it. And then you kind of keep refining it. Particularly with endings, you have to fight your own desire to be grand and pretentious because nobody has a patience for that. Mm -hmm.